the best part about last week's opening weekend in USL Championship was the sheer fact that it meant a couple dozen more weeks of USL soccer beyond it. And here we are in week two as the Oakland Roots host the Charleston Battery. Happy to have you with us this evening. Along with MLS veteran Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Joe Malfa. And Ricky, we have one of the best midfielders in the league, if not the best midfielder in the league in this one tonight, Aaron Malloy. You talk about technique, you talk about vision, you talk about the ability to dictate tempo to move the ball from left to right and really play the game on his terms. Aaron Malloy, yes, he was at Memphis 901. Ben Pierman goes out and gets him. He's going to be big for Charleston Battery. How quickly can he get in a rhythm? Because he's going to be here tonight for the visitors here today. And how quickly can Johnny Rodriguez, perhaps on the other other side get back on the score sheet in 2024 after he led the team with 12 last year and I think you talk about Nelo Delgado you talk about his work rate off the ball and what he's been able to do in the offseason hold up play his movement and the question for the Oakland Roots at home what does the service look like into Johnny Rodriguez because he's going to test and ask a lot of questions of the battery in that back line a scoreless draw for Charleston last week a two to one win for the Roots last week Oakland would like to follow it up with three more points Charleston would like their first win of the season it's East versus West it's Oakland versus Charleston it's right here on ESPN Plus. Tonight's match is presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross. Again, our lineups brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. We're here today with the Oakland Roots and Anthem Blue Cross. Spreading random acts of kindness. Improving the health and wellness of our communities. It allows us to show up in a very different, unique way and actually a very cool way uh, and be embedded as part of the community. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail. Because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card? A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order? Then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with Ava Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about Ava's low rates for electricity. Tonight's match is presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross and Modelo. Time to dive into the starting lineups for the Oakland Roots and Charleston Battery. There's a lot of faces missing for Oakland. We'll get to it more throughout the evening. They had a non-COVID flu hit the team this week. A lot of big faces out. You even have an academy kid in Ilya Alexiev making his debut on the right side. I do think it's going to be very important for Noel Delgado and the players around him to get him in a rhythm, right? To get him comfortable. What does his work rate look like on both sides of the ball? But you look at that back line. Rasmussen, Logue, Tamakas. They need to be very good in terms of providing coverage for Alexi, Nabil Hackshaw, he's going to sit right in front of that back four, so Metsoso, he's going to be the box-to-box -box midfielder, and then you get to the creative players higher up the field. Rodriguez and Sandano need to be very good, as Gomez is a number 10, flipping the script to Charleston Battery. Conway Markinic, that can be flip-flop, but Gutierrez, he's going to provide the width on the right-hand side, and we talked about Aaron Malloy and Chris Allen. Their relationship, moving the ball from left to right, it needs to be very good, and Rodriguez, he's going to be the key player for the Charleston Battery, testing the Oakland Roots and that back line. 
This is going to be a fun midfield battle to watch. You mentioned Allen and Malloy for Charleston. Even with some of the players missing on the Oakland side, still to have Matsoso, Hackshaw, and Gomez. The midfield is probably where this game is won or lost tonight. And it's going to be a fun battle to watch. And I do think who's going to in impose their identity right on the other side? Who's going to take this game by the hands in the first 10 to 15 minutes and really dictate tempo? I'm asking if you're Noel Delgado, you're asking your two, your two midfielders to take the game away from Aaron Malloy because we talked about him in the open, Joe, but he's so good at understanding what the game is giving to him and the ability to unlock opposing back lines. You can't let him get in a rhythm. An impassioned speech, it appeared, in the huddle from Niall Logue for this Oakland Roots side. Navelle Hackshaw wears the captain's armband. We missing him coming up in short order due to national team duty. A couple of players who could be missing from the roots in the coming weeks. Brian Tamakas among them as well. So hoping to pick up another three points before that international swing takes a couple players away. Charleston hoping for three after they felt maybe like they deserved more than just the one point last week in their season opening drop. Felt they created some chances, but sometimes it was possession without purpose, and they want more of that tonight against the Oakland Roots. A handful of changes in the starting 11 for Charleston as well. Just a matter of Ben Pierman shaking things up a bit, seeing what else works. They are a very deep team. You can make the case for a lot of these guys as starters on a given night for a team that ended up as the runners-up in 2023 in USL. Ricardo Fierro is the referee in charge. And we're underway here at Pioneer Stadium. Happy to have you along this evening with MLS veteran Ricky Lopez Espin. I'm Joe Malfa. Shaw sends it long. It was just two minutes into the match last week that Jesse Olsedeño got that opening goal for the Roots. Charleston, of course, still after that nil-nil draw looking for their first goal of 2024. Some characteristic there for Max Shaw. It's going to be very interesting for the Roots just to see the relationship between Hackshaw and Matsoso. The balance needs to be spot on in terms of as one presses, the other one needs to drop back and provide the coverage in front of your back three. Nathan Dos Santos in his first year with Charleston, trading Pittsburgh's black and yellow for Charleston's black and yellow. Looking for Cedeno was Logue. Very curious, Ricky, how tonight Oakland makes do with what they have. You could make the case that even though they, they've been stricken with this illness that has hit the team, 10 of the 11 who are out there on a given night, legitimate starters. It's just a matter of lacking the depth in the second half, the replenishments. They have three players who are first team guys on the bench, the rest academy kids. So you'd imagine they'd like to start strong and try to be able to assert themselves early without having a bench to really turn to. And I think taking care of the ball becomes that much more important, right? Because when you're on the ball, the ball can sweat and you make their Charleston battery, make them get tired, make them chase this game. So the first 10 to 15 minutes, I keep talking about getting in a rhythm because that can do really well and set you up extremely nice for the remainder of this game and especially in the first half. That's easier said than done because this Charleston team, their MO is that possession, is the lateral passes, their internal metrics had them last week at 300 lateral passes in possession, 95% accuracy, numbers that Ben Pierman shared with us. And for as positive as those numbers are, Still wanted more, still wanted possession with purpose, attack, find more opportunities. That's what they lacked last week. That's what they're looking for tonight. We had the chance to talk to Ben Pierman earlier this week, and we asked him what are some keys to be successful here on the road in this hostile environment. He said, look, yes, we want to get on the ball, like you said, Joe, but how do we create opportunities? How do we whip balls into dangerous areas and make movements in between lines? So you're looking at two players at the top of the line for the Charleston Battery in Markanic and Conway, that relationship playing off the blind side of the opposing center backs is going to be key to free themselves up. Tamakas. It's deflected. And one back by Charleston as Gutierrez goes down. Gutierrez last week wasn't 100%. Getting him back from injury here today. That's a knock he'll be able to walk off in just a moment. 
Gutierrez, the 25-year-old from Omaha, Nebraska. Spent the last two years in the Portland Timbers organization. Where do you go to school? A little time at Creighton. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a player that has really changed his game since coming into the pro ranks at Creighton University. Scoring goals for fun. Goes to Portland Th Timbers, excuse me, had the ability just to play on the wide areas of the field. And now we see him making his living in Charleston colors. A very good player. Ben Pierman spoke extremely high of Gutierrez and his ability to just to produce that little bit of individual brilliance. And the more we get Creighton into a broadcast, the more the Creighton Blue Jay next to me smiles a little bit bigger. <laughs> Happier Ricky is. Former teammates out there at Portland as well. Justin Rasmussen getting the start tonight for Oakland. Spent two years in that Portland organization with Gutierrez. We're starting to see more of that this year. Players from MLS rosters, as MLS has adjusted its roster rules, who have now shaken free and been able to supplement a lot of USL rosters, just a talent pool continuing to rise around this league. Daniel looking for it. Graham Smith hands it up the field. Gutierrez, a fistful of jersey by Tabacas, and that's going to be an early yellow. Just talked about Gutierrez and his ability in tight spaces with the ball stuck to his foot. Weathers play essentially, Weathers play in wide areas. Ryan Tabacas steps off his line just a tad bit early overzealous to win this ball a handful of the jersey and that's something if you're Noel Delgado you don't want to see the right side of the three center backs on a yellow card then the first 10 minutes here big challenge in terms of his discipline and his positioning for the remainder of this game Malloy, who distributes the set piece. Well defended by Oakland. Malloy, 27-year-old, back-to-back years, USL Championship first team. The year before that, USL League One first team when he was with Ford Madison. The year before that was here, he got drafted in 2020, so split some time between the Timbers first team and the Timbers second team. COVID year, things were different. Tough to really find a rhythm. The year before that, he was all Big Ten first team at Penn State. What I'm getting at is <laughs> every year since 2019, whatever level he's played at, with the exception of that quirky COVID year, he's been first team all league every single year, regardless of the level, college, USL League One, USL Championship, first team every single year. And Allen commits the foul. Already talked about how important the center of the park was going to be between these two clubs. Alan Matsoso saying, Hi, how are you early in this game? Trying to impose their identity. So, been cagey already eight minutes in. You need to be a bit cleaner if you're the Oak Roots at just relieving some of that first line of pressure that Charleston Battery is throwing at you right here. Memo Diaz returns to the starting 11 tonight with the ball in hand. Missed last week due to a suspension. Picked up a red card in the final game of last season. Well, this is the last thing you want to see right now if you're Oakland. Napo Matsoso down, flexing that left leg, helped to his feet by Hackshaw. An already short-handed roster because of the flu that has stricken the team. A grimace on the face of Matsoso is the last thing you want to see. Struggling to walk it off, still looking over at that bench. Look at him, left side of your screen. Hobbling now on the right side of your screen. An eye on that. Diaz down the line. And he 
Megan Gomez came in and made a world of difference last week. Nishida Nersheri, the striker, started the match for Oakland. Tactical sub, according to Noah Delgado. Pulled him off at half, flooded the midfield with Gomez. Game changed. Gomez had the pass to the pass that led to the Tamakas goal to make it 2-1. to one. Now gets to start tonight. Part of the necessity of all the illnesses, but he might have started anyway, given the week he had last week. That's so so still not moving right. After that touch, hobbled away from the play, and he is going back down now. Something didn't feel right. You could tell right when he went down initially. Just trying to read the body language. It looks like he's going to have a tough time continuing tonight. Just begs the question, what change can Oakland even make? Lindo Mafeka is available on the bench, but he's not 100%. They would like to ease him back in with maybe 20 or 30 minutes tonight. Unless you dip into the academy, kids, there's Trayvon Reed. You can do the inverse of what you did last week when you brought Michelin Sheri off and Gomez on. You could bring off a midfielder, bring on Sheri, and slide the midfielder Gomez back a little bit. So it's going to have to be some maneuvering around the chessboard if Matsoso can't continue, and that look does not paint a positive picture. This is where you have to just make an interesting decision as the player and as the coach protecting the player from himself. Yes, you're shorthanded tonight, but is pushing Metzosa maybe more than he can go worth risking him for the next three weeks at the cost of a point or two tonight? You never want to tap yourself out of a game, especially with a shorthanded bench, but just things you have to think about more long term as a player and the coach. And with the experience of Napa Metzosa, knows his body better than anyone else, and that's when the trust comes within between him and El Delgado, the communication. If he can go, you put him on the field. But if he cannot, like you said, Joe, think about the bigger picture. Game two of the 2024 season. And yes, the bench is thin in terms of experience, but a lot that Noah Delgado can do. And it's going to be very interesting to see what card he pulls out here. 11 minutes in. Juan Palma. Slip through from Segber. Some contact there. Free kick on the way for Charleston. Now we have our answer. We were talking about it a few moments ago, Ricky. If it would just be the inverse of the sub that was made last week in a way where they brought Sherry off, put a midfielder on. This week it's bringing off a midfielder, putting Sherry on, and we'll see how this reshuffles the rest of the deck for the Oakland Roots. Gonna have to deal with a very dangerous set piece here. Here, Aaron Malloy, Arturo Rodriguez, a plethora of opportunities and options that you can do. Try to squeak in Paul Blanchett to that near side and just whip this ball in right on top of that six yard box and test the shape and cause confusion within the Oaken Roots and that goalkeeper. Rodriguez and Malloy staring down a three man wall. It is Rodriguez through the wall. The wall came apart but did its job deflected in the end by Alexiev for a corner. Led the league in chances created last year. From the corner. Bounces through. Finally cleared away by Rodriguez. Only as far as Malloy where it came from. Secondary ball in from Malloy. A good one. Closest to it was Jackson Conway. Last year Malloy had eight assists for Memphis. He led the league with 80 chances created. The next best player at 67. With 13 better than second place. He's... A mountain to get around in that defensive midfield. And then, oh, by the way, he can start the attack and distribute the way he can. A 
as respectfully as I possibly could, I, I asked Ben Pierman this week, why is Aaron Malloy still in USL? This one slipped through for Sherry, and I'll let it go as Grinwis clears it. And it was a very interesting answer from Ben Pierman as to why Malloy is still here. Happy to have him, of course. Miscommunication here, headed back to Blanchett, who has it in the end. Ryan Tamakas <laughs> makes a little funny face as a wry smile is now on the face of Blanchett as well. Just also, well, that ends well. Just shows you the weapons that the battery have at their disposal, whether it's on this near side or that far side, the movement to break the line. And if you're Tamakas and Paul Blanchett, that's when you need to have a lot of communication and make a decision, almost an uh-oh moment. And that would have been a frustrating way to concede for Noel Delgado and the Oaken Roots here. And they are helping Nepo Matsoso, by the way over to the bench, he cannot even make his way around, walking by himself, just sat down. And he helped the entire way around. Malloy on it again. Long ball over the top, Blanchett clears. Open one of the offside flag, never popped up. So the answer to why Malloy is still here, part of it is Ben Pierman blaming himself. They got him on a low transfer fee from Madison to Memphis, tied him down to a two-year deal, which didn't give him much, much flexibility as a yellow card is going to come out of the pocket here for Juan Palma as Rodriguez is fouled. Now the ability to talk with Ben Pierman about Johnny Rodriguez and kindly compared him to the movement of Luis Suarez, how clever he is at the space that he picks up, whether it's high up the field, but whether it's dropping off to pick up those second balls. You just see the body movement. He putting himself between the ball and Palma. Palma comes through him, takes a lot of him, not a lot of the ball, picks up a yellow card 16 minutes in. So I do think you bring Sherry on, that's gonna free up some real estate for Johnny Rodriguez just to operate in off the shoulder, in the hole, and stretching the Charleston back line. Big test for the visitors here. Diaz, Cedeno, both standing over it. And now a stoppage here. Ricardo Fierro wants to have a word. So to finish up on Malloy, it was a case of the two-year deal limited him to Memphis. At the end of that deal, which was this past offseason, he had looks from MLS, he had looks from Europe, but he didn't want to wait. He wanted the security of a deal close with Ben Pierman, decided to sign with Charleston, and even after he signed, Charleston had to push away some efforts from a handful of MLS teams to still acquire him. So long story short, Ben Pierman knows he's gone eventually. Happy to have him while he's still here, and the only reason is some contractual technicalities, otherwise he's probably at a higher level. Now Diaz from the free kick, Tack Shaw, here's Cherie bringing it down. Reach that air, Cherie. Back heel looking for Cedeno, forcing his way through. Cedeno took a deflection, and Grinwis prevents the corner. Every moment in the back for the visitors here at Charleston Battery. You never want to let this ball bounce in your defensive 18 yard box. And give credit to Cherie. Thought at first he was going to try to do this spectacular hit it first time. And that's where you want Cedeno. Head full of steam inside that 18-yard box. So clever and so slippery, 1v1. Give credit to the Charleston Battery. Not leaving their feet, making life extremely difficult and denying a shot on target. Gutierrez pushes for Dos Santos. Rodriguez calling for it. Instead, it's toward Conway. After all that, cleared out to Allen. Conway is somebody that Charleston wants to get going. Floated over the top. And a free kick coming for Oakland. And Conway is a name that'll sound familiar to some USL Championship fans. 2018, really through certain portions of 2023 with Atlanta United 2 when they were in USL Championship and then eventually to MLS Next Pro. He also went on loan from Atlanta to Phoenix for a handful of games last year. And when he was last in USL for a full season, when he was still with Atlanta, he put up some terrific numbers. 11 goals in 24 starts back in that 2022 season, which again was his last full year in USL Championship.
Gutierrez. It's inside, back outside. Gutierrez turning Tamakas around. And he wins another corner. It's been all one-way traffic for the battery. Neil Kunwood's having a very difficult time just breaking the pressure and just connecting passes higher up the field. That's when you want to get Sherry on the ball, make him a little bit stronger and relieving, being that focal point to play off of. Gutierrez, Rodriguez, Marcanic have all been very active. You have to give credit to Alex even Memo Diaz, very good defensively as well. Covering down and dropping down. Malloy toward that back post. A lot of traffic there, a lot of hand fighting as well. And eventually Blanchette pounces on it. Paid for it. See all the traffic right in front of Paul Blanchette. Makes life extremely difficult for a goalkeeper to come off his line. Fortunate enough for him. Santos unable to react quick enough. That injury timeout was brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. And tonight's injury report brought to you by UCSF Health and UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. It's a slew of players not injured for Oakland, but out due to illness. They didn't officially come on the injury report as a result of that. But missing bevy of guys, Babu Jai, Nagi Mark Velashvili, Cam Riley among the group. Like a non-COVID illness, the official report. Just couldn't go tonight. A couple of them, they were holding out hope that they would feel up to it. But again, as we talked about with Matt Soso, just this early in the year, why push it? Get exactly. healthy, you have more games beyond it, playing week in, week out now to begin your season. Not that this eases the blow at all, but it is a West versus East matchup, so it's not a six-point swing. If you lose, so be it. Those three points go out to the Eastern Conference. Just all things you have to encompass in your risk calculation. Hackshaw looking to spring Rodriguez. Grinwis at the very edge of his box. Grabs it. And Pierman looking on. Helped guide this team to the USL final last year, maybe ahead of schedule. Don't know that a lot of people would have had Charleston pegged to make the final last year. All of a sudden, everything clicked. Had an interesting chat in that regard with Ben Pierman about expectations this year. Just because you got there maybe a year before you expected to, doesn't necessarily mean it's back to the championship or bust this year. And, and they're making sure to keep expectations realistic. They firmly believe with the talent they have, they can get back there again. But it's a matter of continuing to lay the foundation for a successful future after a couple of wayward years for the club. Just make the playoffs again, see what you could do once you get in, knowing they have the talent to pull it off and get there again and maybe re the ending this time. But there's no sort of championship or bust mandate, if you will, just because they happened to get there a year ahead of schedule last year. It was interesting. You also said, look, every single team in the USL Championship, besides one maybe, and he said Lou City, but the turnovers they had, they're still trying to figure out who they are, right? Trying to figure out their identity. But the key is how do you pick up points at home or even on the road while you're figuring out your identity, who you are. That's a mark of a good team, the ability to face adversity in its face when you're not playing your best, when you're still trying to work through things and find a way to win. The 2024 season tickets are still available. Get the most benefits and lowest ticket prices by securing your season ticket package for the rest of the year. To secure your tickets, visit us at oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. Already 23 minutes in, we haven't really seen the Oakland Roots just connect about five, six, seven passes, especially in the middle of the field. You need to get Gomez in a rhythm. You need to get Cedeno on the ball. Cherie has been extremely quiet since coming on the field. So how do you really take the sting out of the attacking phase of the battery? Maybe with a quick, incisive movement like that, it wasn't far off from finding Cherie. The other way now, Malloy springs the attack. Out into space in search of 
a streaking mechanic, but Blanchett made a mess of it. Any potential Oakland fans or just fans of the league who maybe didn't tune in last week, you notice here at Pioneer Stadium, looks a little different. They did this year bring the playing surface from Laney over to Pioneer Stadium and lay it over the turf. So your eyes do not deceive you. It does look familiar. Markanic. Cuts to his left. Markanic goes for goal. Had it blocked. Still alive here, but off target. And the effort from Gutierrez. Conway was begging for a pass across the box. Really sloppy turnover from Rasmussen, but if you're Marcanic, this ball needs to go out to Diego Gomez, Gutierrez, excuse me, on your first look. As you keep going horizontally, it closes down that wing window. And an awkward ball for Gutierrez. You just see the spin in the English on it. This time's his hit. In moments like that, if you're Rasmussen, how clean can you be at playing out of the back? Because you see how explosive the Charleston battery can be at turning their defense into offense. Elsewhere, Monterey Bay, a 1-0 lead against Phoenix Rising. Malloy. for Smith. Graham Smith, another one of those Memphis guys that Ben Pierman was able to bring over. Only played under him for one year back in that 2022 season. Like Malloy, spent last year at Memphis as well. And now rejoining with their old coach. Another free kick for Charleston. A number that I think paints the picture so far, Ricky, is final third entries. It's felt like it's been one-way traffic. Right now, Charleston have twice as many final third entries as the Oakland Roots. They've been living on this end of the field so far. Haven't done anything to show for it, but another opportunity brewing here. And it goes back to our chat with Ben Pierman. He said, look, even when we played against North Carolina FC, we did a lot of things well, especially in that final third. But how can we make those opportunities count? How can we have a nice little backfield there from Cedeno? Such a clever player, Cedeno. I like Steve. Couldn't do anything with it, though. How do we make those opportunities in those final third entries matter and test the goalkeeper? Moments ago, Markanic, the ball either needs to go to Jackson Conway or Gutierrez. As, you've been, are you, as you are a little bit selfish, that closes down the window. It's an opportunity that goes to the wayside. Cherie. It's going to be interesting to watch his development all season long for the Oakland Roots. Player who wasn't technically a professional until this year. He had four professional games under his belt in CONCACAF Champions Cup last year for the amateur team Violette of Haiti, who upset Austin FC of MLS and then lost to Club Leon, the eventual champions. And he scored four goals in those four games, all four with his head, but never previously a professional before this year. So a lot of development to do, a lot of refining, but I think they have a gem in terms of the raw talent. You have a lot of things that you can't teach, right? You just look at his physical attributes. The ability to hold the ball up is going to be key for the Oakland Roots, not only in this game, but for the remainder of the 2024 season. Because you have the likes of a, of a Cedeno, of a Gomez, Rodriguez, who like to play off the shoulder as that second midfielder. You can just see Dos Santos catch. The Oakland Roots play a Cedeno there, and standing left leg, great ball. In behind, floated toward the back post in search of Shuri. That's where he's most dangerous in the air. Oakland Roots and Charlie 2024 jerseys are here and selling fast. Purchase your 2024 jersey by visiting shop.oaklandrootssc.com. Segbers. Another part of the Memphis battery, Mark Segbers. Played for Pierman in Memphis, now here in Charleston. That Memphis team did some really good things. It's no surprise that he's plucked some of the best pieces of that group. 
Now added him into this one. Hackshaw. It seems like it's going to have to be tonight for the Roots. Missing the guys they're missing. Has to be more direct and just focused on the defending. Because they are a team who love to possess. When two teams who love to possess go at it, somebody has to win out. It's Charleston winning out, but Oakland maybe a concerted effort to sit back a little bit, given their limitations with the roster tonight. If you would have told Noah Delgado before this game started, it's still a long way to go, just over an hour, that he would come away with a nil-nil draw. Given the circumstances, he might have signed up for that right away. One thing he does not want to happen for the Oakland Roots at this moment in time is just to get stretched out. It's over the last five minutes or so, Charlie Rodriguez and Cherie have pushed up a little bit higher with the likes of Gomez and Cedeno underneath them, but then that leaves them vulnerable with Neville Hackshaw having to cover a lot of ground because we just see the Charleston Battery committing a lot of numbers forward. So it's almost man-to-man -man higher up the field for the visitors here, and that's something if you know Delgado, you always want to be a plus one in your defensive structure and deny transition moments. Segbers. There's the diagonal looking for Gutierrez. Eventually finds it. Overlap from Dos Santos. Gutierrez blocked. Rodriguez. Four changes to their 11, Charleston, after the match last week. It's not a deep team in terms of the quantity. They have a smaller roster, but quality. I mean, you could have two starting units who are playoff caliber teams if you really parse through it for this Charleston side. The likes of Archer, Drac, Ikaza, and Lakava, the four who started last week, who don't start today. That'd be a pretty good core of the new expansion side in USL Championship. Replaced by Gutierrez, Conway, Juan Palma, Nathan Dos Santos. A lot of quality in this group for Charleston. Segbers looking for Conway. Welcome to the 2024 USL kickoff presented by Terminix. Throughout the month of March, the USL will be kicking off across the country. Join us for all the action on ESPN and CBS Sports platforms. Another corner. Nearly going here for Charleston. That Malloy stands over. That's a dangerous sight for the opposition. Malloy, a perfect corner, a header is blocked by Hackshaw. That was by design. Mechanic. Another corner. It's off of Rasmussen. Been really impressed with the movement from the battery on the top line, whether it's the underlapping runs or the overlapping runs. How many times have we seen Mark Segbers advance himself into the final third? This time it's Marcanic from inside out, forcing the issue and just unbalancing the shape for the Oakland Roots. And yet again, when you have this man over the ball, always a dangerous opportunity. Malloy, good service. Loose in front after the header from Smith. Oakland stands strong again. Here's Malloy. We just misread on that back end. Malloy, Conway! Not a bad effort. how you want Sharit to just to be a little bit stronger on the ball. And that's going to grow with time in terms of his progression as a professional. How to be stronger 
really invite the pressure when he goes down he slows this game down and really take out the rhythm for the Charleston battery because it's been like we talked about Joe 34 minutes in the battery really taking this game to the Oakland roots Volcanic it's another corner for the Charleston battery it's a dangerous game to be playing for Oakland but it's just a sign of the pressure that Charleston is putting on the roots right now that's the second time back to back that they've looked shaky as well the roots on a ball being whipped in and it's not X and O's that's not being talented it's just having the will to win your individual battles stay like for like with your marker from Malloy once again Rodriguez heads it clear Memo Diaz Gomez waited too long for it Sigbers Turo Rodriguez. Good ball from Rodriguez. Blanchett sees it go over the line. He got a piece of it, couldn't keep it out. And Markanic has the first goal of the year for the Charleston Battery. Decision making and composure, but watch the top of your screen, Markanic, as he just floats in the gray area right off the shoulder of Rasmussen between him and Logue. The last second, he gets a better body position. It's not the best of header, but with the whippage of Rod Rodriguez, the pace behind the ball, you just need to get it on target and you give yourself a chance. Paul Blanchett is going to look at this one, he's going to want it back. He should not let that ball cross over the line, but the visitors here, 36 minutes in get the go-ahead goal on the road. Just looked out at Paul Blanchett and he took a couple of steps toward his penalty spot. And then he sort of did a meditative exercise, closed his eyes, took a deep breath in, palms to the sky, brought him down. Just centering himself again after that, clearly upset, feeling that he should have saved it. But it's the pace that Rodriguez just whips the ball in. My mechanic understands I'm not going to generate a lot of power. I just need to get a flick on it, get a touch on it, and direct it towards goal. And hopefully catches Paul Blanchett by surprise, unable to get his feet set. And now what does the reaction look like for the Oakland Roots? At home, haven't seen a lot of the ball. Looking for the experience and the leadership on the field if you're Nils Delgado, just to get in a rhythm and really take the sting out of this battery side. One of the biggest compliments Noah Delgado gave his back line last week was for the first game together, it didn't look like a first game together. With all new faces among the center backs, communication was great. And then what happens? Then a little bit of poor luck, they get sick and you have three different center backs. Not all different players. Tamakas went from the right wing back to right center back. Dio Logue has to move over. Rasmussen comes in. So just a different mixture of guys with new wing backs and Alex Sieve and Diaz They've been holding strong to that point. But eventually, Arcanic breaks through. And now Charleston wants more before the halftime break. You know, there also needs to be a little bit more in terms of communication between the center backs. You always want to pass players off and make sure that a striker's on the blind side of your teammate. Lo gets caught flat-footed, doesn't communicate with Rasmussen, but you have to give credit to Mark Arcanic. The movement to free himself, whether it's a yard, whether it's an inch, as an attacking player, you gain all the real estate that you can in the attacking 18-yard box. Now just carelessly conceding a corner, Oakland. Rodriguez will venture out to take this one instead of Malloy. You just see this battery side, just the plethora of options just to strike a ball. Well, there's Rodriguez, this young man. Gutierrez. Yeah, Malloy said no thanks to Arturo. <laughs> he came over and took it anyway. Rodriguez was ready to. He got the assist on the goal, Rodriguez. And now Malloy from the corner. Just a mistimed jump from Cedeno, but he recovers it anyway. Gomez. Just don't have an outlet up the field right now, Oakland, because they're so on their heels defending these set pieces. Select the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com 
for the latest select product specials and more. Select the player's choice. up the wing by Dos Santos. Gutierrez serves it up looking for Conway. Tamakas that find on the wing of Cedeno. Going to get it to Rodriguez. Graham Smith got in the way. Rodriguez. Gutierrez. Working to the end line, shielded away from that end line, and it's out for a goal kick. Really good defending there from Tamakas. Reading the body language of Gutierrez, not diving in. I want to see a little bit more of that between the three center backs. shift from Charleston. Rodriguez had been out on this right wing. He slotted back inside as a 10 now, and Markanik has come to the wing. And Pierman talked a bit about Markanik's role, that he's going to be the closest to replacing what they lose in selling off Fidel Barajas, in that Markanik can be up top as a 9. He can come out on the right wing. He can impact the game from anywhere. He'll have to bear some of the brunt of the Goal contributions lost with Barajas. Who Ben Pierman could not have been more complimentary of, by the way. Augie Williams gone as well. Oakland saw him last week. In the 11, he was destined to play in Oakland the first two weeks of the season regardless, whether it was with Charleston or whether it was with Indy. They kept him in check last week and Don Delgado was happy about that. Again, going back to that conversation about it being a new look back line to go up against one of the best strikers in the league on opening night and keep him in check. Here's a guy who they think could be among the best in Cherie. Disappointed not to get the foul call. He thought he had earned it. Seemed to be a clean tackle. after that play, Brian Tamakas signaling to Alexis just to break the line, get a bit higher. You don't want your wing back to be flat next to your three center backs. You play with a three back system so your wing backs can provide the width and create overloads on wide areas. An academy player getting a lot of good experience here. No better to have that leadership between him and Brian Tamaka. So look for something if you're Neil Delgado, just to push him a little bit higher. Try to pin back this battery back line. Rodriguez. Haven't called his name a ton tonight. Battling here. Committing the foul. Two guys we spotlighted top of the broadcast coming together there. Rodriguez and Malloy. Hello for Rodriguez. Just a bit overzealous and too eager to win this ball back. You just watch the left foot come across. And Malloy there, there's just no need. And he knows it right after. 
To be fair, I think it's extremely soft to see yellow. But he is a player that if you're Noel Delgado in the Oakland Roots, you need to get him more involved. That's getting a lot of him as that's also goes down, so that drops in to Daniel and Gomez. So what does his relationship look like between him and Cherry? Two different profile of players, but can complement each other at a very high level if they get on the same page. The foul was initially called by the referee. Almost looks like Hackshaw slipped over the ball. He's in a great deal of pain. Injury timeout brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. of an awkward fall here from Hackshaw. I think he's looking for this foul and expects Markanek to come in. Like you said, Joe, just gets on the ball on top of it, falls awkwardly. No contact whatsoever, but hopefully he's okay. That's, again, if you're no Delgado. Matsoso goes down. He gets off the field early due to injury. And now it's Hackshaw. Three minutes of additional time tacked on, but that won't start until this stoppage ends. Couldn't even quite tell which leg was ailing Hackshaw more. He was reaching for both of them. And a very awkward stumble at the end of that play. He seems like he's able to walk it off. 38 caps. Trinidad and Tobago, who have a very big game coming up this coming weekend against Canada. Cap Nations League play-in game to make Copa America. Well, that's a good sign for Max Shaw. He wanted to come back out right away and seemed a bit annoyed that he couldn't go out there right away. And now he's way back on it. So he seems to be all right. Right into the mix. Segbers rounds the corner. Hackshaw, a little nudge in the back. And a corner, excuse me, a goal kick. Terrific work there from Hackshaw. Mark Segbers is known for his pace to be direct as an outside back. My question mark, if you're Nelson Delgado, that should be Memo Diaz tracking back, right? He should not be staying high up the field. Well, 30 yards away from the collision there back you need to play on both sides of the ball still one nil Monterey Bay at home over Phoenix Phoenix lost their opener against Birmingham, the reigning champions. Still have 45 minutes to go there, but potentially staring, I don't know, in two start. Meanwhile, last year's runners up, Charleston up 1-0 here against Oakland. Goal scored in the 35th minute by Nick Markanic. Assist to Arturo Rodriguez. aspects of the attack that Oakland is sorely missing tonight is Brian Tamakas. He's out there, but because of the illnesses that have 
affected the lineup tonight. He's forced to play right center back instead of right wing back. Just think of how impactful he was last game. Some of the chances he generated, the one he scored in the 50th minute to make it two to one. Here he comes now. Cedeno. Free kick coming for Oakland. What he does as well, he just gives you an option. Just gives you a threat, an option to play wide and break the line of the opposing back line. And as the opposite outside back needs to make a decision, do, the, do they deal with the run of Tamakas or do they stay centrally connected to that back line? We haven't really seen the threat from either wing back for the Oakland Roots, whether it's Memo Diaz, whether it's Alexiev, both saying ho home. Don't know if that's by design by Noah Delgado. We need to ask more questions to test the shape of the battery. Rodriguez, Cedeno standing over it. Johnny Rodriguez. Well, that happened. And out for a goal kick. He certainly produced some highlights <laughs> his time at <laughs> Oakland. The bicycle kick against San Diego a couple years ago comes to mind. A dozen goals last year. Not his finest moment. All entitled to a few like that. Haven't even had to call the name of Adam Grinwitz tonight. 31-year-old goalkeeper, clean sheet last week, journeyman in his career. Back and forth, he's bounced between USL and MLS. Two years in Rochester, one year in St. Louis. Two years in MLS with Orlando. Back in USL with Sacramento. Back for two years in Orlando. This year with Charleston, hasn't actually played a ton all throughout that. Starter in USL with a backup in MLS. Cherie. Just needs to be quicker through every single play for the Oakland Roots. When you force a turnover, how quickly can you exploit those spaces that the battery have left themselves exposed to? Whether it's Cherie, whether it's Gomez. Been a very pedestrian-like first half for the Oakland Roots in the attacking phase of the game. A blown there by Paul Blanchett, but now what does the reaction look like for the hope side and for the Charleston Battery and Ben Pierman? You have to be extremely pleased. Dictating tempo, playing on your way you want to play. Big 45 minutes coming up on the side of the break. Big 45 minutes for Charleston as well after a draw in the opener last week. They have a 1-0 lead against the depleted side. Can you hold on to it? Can you expand the lead? And can you cement the three points? Halfway through this one, Oakland nothing. Charleston ahead by one on that Nick Marcanic goal. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. They're still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card. A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order? Then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with Ava Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about Ava's low rates for electricity. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail. Because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Mabukar and Jai, Eric Jose Graciano, and family had a dream to start their own food spot. And last weekend, they debuted Pablo and Cozy's Kitchen at the home opener. You can stop by the concourse at an Oakland Roots game, enjoy some taste of Africa, and support your Oakland Roots players. It was a great look behind the scenes. Hi, this is Babu the Coach's Kitchen, and we would like to welcome you guys 
at this weekend's game, we'll be serving uh, African food, West African food, some jollof rice. So come try us out. This is the players' den. Come check us out. This is the players' den, like I said. This is Gagi. What? Hey, you When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. You've given us a foundation to be proud of. We build on this now. This is it now, gents. This is us from now on. Pain doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. They're hungry for the women's game. They want to see women's soccer. They want to play women's soccer. And that's what we're building at the USL. A 1-0 lead at the break for the Charleston Battery over the Oakland Roots. A look around. USL Championship. The Open Cup begins next week, Ricky. A field of 47 USL clubs from top to bottom in all the divisions. Best tournament every year. Can't wait for it. And all, as an opportunity, that's all you want, right? For a team, for a player, for a league. Yes, you're not going to play maybe the whole field of MLS, but what an opportunity to play for a trophy. And we saw what Sacramento Republic did years ago. Who's going to emulate that and who's going to be the one to break that mold? And last year's USL 1 Player of the Year, Trevor Amon, a brace in his debut with Sacramento. Let's take a look at some scores from out of town, brought to you by Visit Oakland. Get out on the town and visit Oakland to explore arts, culture, and a world-class cuisine. Another good result earlier today for Sacramento. Two big points, or two big goals to lead to three big points for Orange County against Pittsburgh as well. And all around, it's just been a fun resumption of play. So many great games all across the board. You look at El Paso Locomotive. Three games at home, one point to show from it. Blue City did not miss the mark. Louis Wilson Harris gets a goal. And then Rhode Island in front of a packed house. Stoppage time equalizer. You see what Kano Smith is trying to do there. Like you said, Joe, I do think the big one, Orange County against Pittsburgh Riverhounds. And just some more results at Tampa Bay and San Antonio. But looking ahead, I mean, you take your pick. Uh, my eyes actually go to Hartford and Birmingham. Birmingham, a well-coached team, lost some players, but positive result to begin this year in Hartford to new look side basically Colorado Springs switchbacks brought east by Brendan Burke <laughs> and Hartford loaded this year as well and Moose City hosting Pittsburgh Riverhounds Lynn Family Stadium that one's going to be very interesting and in the 11 playing host to Sacramento Republic Mark Briggs and company what was the reaction always going to be look like when you lose when you lose two points out of your pocket from a goalkeeper scoring a goal <laughs> right. and stoppage time you go down to Miami, take all three points, and now you go to a very talented Indy 11 side who just beat Memphis on the road. Loving a lot of this early season cross-conference flair as well. We see some of that tonight with Charleston against Oakland. 45 down, 45 to go, and the battery ahead 1-0. Do the Roots have a response, or do the battery pick up their first win of 2024? Presented in 
Part 5 and the Blue Cross. And our lineups brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. We're here today with the Oakland Roots and Anthem Blue Cross. Spreading random acts of kindness. Improving the health and wellness of our communities. It allows us to show up in a very different, unique way and actually a very cool way uh, and be embedded as part of the community. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card? A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order? Then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with Ava Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about Ava's low rates for electricity. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail. Because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. They're still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday... Pain doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. Tonight's match is presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross and Modelo. Take a look back at highlights from half number one. It's going to be a lot of one-sided highlights on the side of the Charleston Battery. And it was all about the wide areas for the visitors, whether it was Marcanic, whether it was Segbers, or Gutierrez on the weak side. I thought he started the game extremely well and almost an uh-oh moment with just with the pressure from the Charleston Battery. If you're Tamaka, if you're Paul Blanchett, the communication needs to be a lot better. Paul Blanchett needs to have the ability just to stay home and trust that Tamaka is going to push this ball back to you. But the game really changed when Napo Matsoso, he went off the field and it led a big gaping hole in the center of the park. And you just see the overloads that the Charleston Battery are trying to create, whether it's Marcanic once again, but that ball needs to be shedded wide, whether it's to Conway or Gutierrez, and he just miss hits it with the English. It's a very difficult technique, just a slash across the ball. The game really opened up once again, pumping balls into a dangerous area. Give credit to Rodriguez, sizes up the play, head up the whole entire time, and it all comes down to the movement for Marcanic. He plays right between the two center backs and it's a lack of rotation, a lack of communication, and a lack of goalkeeping, to be fair, from Paul Blanchett. He knows he should be saving this one right down the middle of the field, and you see the frustration. The Char Charleston Battery walk into halftime 1-0 up. Look at the stats from that first half and the shots paint the good picture here. 9-2, to one-way traffic. Another one to think about. Touches in the opposing 18-yard box. I don't show that one to you. 
here, 11 to 4 in favor of Charleston. Just gives you a sense of the territories controlled by the battery and why they're up 1 0, possibly more, is what they deserve. It just needs to be better for the Oakland Roots in the attacking phase of the game. Your first look needs to be forward, especially when you force a turnover. Try to catch out this battery side because they do leave themselves exposed because they like to throw a lot of numbers forward. So you're looking at the likes of Rodriguez and Cherie, too. When you're not in possession, they need to be ball side so they can be an outlet play. And then what does the support system look like in and around them? And for Charleston Battery, I do think if you can get an o the secondary goal within the first 10 minutes it's coming out of the break, it's going to leave yourself extremely comfortable for the remainder of the second half. Players are starting to make their way back out onto the field. Saw a good look at Jojo Nane, you know, the assistant coach now for the Oakland Roots player last year. Wonder if they could have dusted off an old jersey of his <laughs> at halftime and ran him out there. To desperately use the extra body tonight. They're very happy to keep him around. One of the captains last year, along with Emra Clementa, who's gone on to Las Vegas. Tarek Murad wore the armband at times. He's moved on as well. They lost a lot of their leadership group. They rely on Navel Hakshon now as the captain of this group. What would you like to see more of in this second half from Oakland, Ricky? It feels like they're caught between a rock and a hard place. They need to do something different because it wasn't working for them offensively in the first half. But they also don't want to push too much because they're so limited. They only have two legitimate outfield players who are on first team contracts who have played for them in the past that they can turn to. So very limited given the illness that has stricken the team this week. But you're down 1-0. Do you throw caution to the wind? Do you just play the way you are and hope for a counter? What, is, what do you do with this position? I think, number one, you need to stay more compact, right? If your front line goes, that's okay. But you have to make sure that your midfield line and your back line goes with them because what you don't want to happen, you don't want to spread apart and have gaps open up because then you start chasing and you get a little bit more fatigue and gaps start to open up in the Charleston battery side. Too much talent. And the other side of that, take care of the ball. Move the ball from left to right because how many times, Joe, did we see in that first half we try to play direct? Yes, I know you don't have the depth on the roster. Players are out due to illness, but take care of it. The ball never gets tired. Make the visitors chase a little bit more. And as they start to chase, that's when gaps can open up. And I do think your first look has to be forward. You force a turnover, try to punch this ball into Johnny Rodriguez and Cherie and relieve some of that pressure. I think those are some of the messages that no Delgado told his side because the game is there to be had, right? You're only down one nil and we know the special player that Johnny Rodriguez is. He can pull something out of a hat. How good can he be in the second half? He needs to be step up and be massive. We're going to see Edgar Cruz join the huddle now for the Oakland Roots. 18 year old from the academy did sign his first team deal this year. Oh, Delgado described him as crafty, just always finding the right space, works hard. Had a couple of goals in the preseason. Coming through Project 510 in Academy. And underway in half number two. Oakland left to right in their gray. Charleston right to left in their black and yellow. With MLS veteran Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Joe Malfa. Happy to have you with us this evening. Try from distance here by Cedeno. Off target. Substitution on the root side. We mentioned Edgar Cruz coming on. It was for Brian Tamakas. Not a like for like change. It'll be curious to see how that shuffles things. I think you're going to see Neville Hackshaw, Neville, excuse me, punch onto that back line as the right side of the three. And then you have Cruz and Gomez as the two central players. So Daniel underneath Jerry and Rodriguez. And there is Hackshaw. You wonder what the motivation is behind that sub. Something that comes to mind is just the upcoming national team duty. If that was something that was on Noah Delgado's mind. Here's Rodriguez. It looked like Tamakas picked up any sort of knock in that half. 
mean, he was on a yellow card. That could be something that played into the mind of Noel Delgado. But again, very interesting. Watch out. You almost wonder if he was among the group that were sick, as this illness has cost a few players being available tonight. And if he tried to push through it and just isn't feeling 100%, yeah, if we find out an answer, we'll pass it along your way. But a curious move at the half for the Roots. One of the few times that Adam Grinwis has had ball in hand. Did not see a shot on target in that first half. Goalkeeper had been in a position of trouble over the last couple of years for Charleston. Looking for somebody to lock it down. The veteran in Grinwis. Picked up by Markanic, the goal scorer. Markanic for Gutierrez. Gutierrez had it blocked, still bouncing around. That ball could have gone any which way. And now it's Rodriguez looking upfield. And Rodriguez goes down a bit too easy, and Malloy has space. Malloy slips it through for Conway. Offside. Just a vision on that pass from Malloy. Waded into the path of Conway. If they can get him going in this 2024 season, just throws in another weapon for Ben Pierman at his, at his disposal. I like the mechanic. You know Aaron Maloney's going to get you your, the ball into very advantageous opportunities. Stumble from Sherry. Still works out as he got it through. Now it's Sherry. Playon says the referee. Floated toward the back post. Headed home. Ilya Alexeev in his debut for the Roots. Doesn't even know what to do with himself, so he joins the rest of the group. Mentioned it earlier in the first half. You play wing back just to create an overload. And Ben Pierman asking to unbalance this back line. Alexiev advancing himself to the back shoulder. No rotation whatsoever from Dos Santos. Great ball in. And a terrific header from Alexiev. Back across where it came from. Sneaks it into that near post and off to the corner. Like you said, Joe, doesn't even know how to celebrate. What a moment for the young man. And Oka Roots tied this thing 1-1. You'd think you'd have some idea as to how to celebrate. He scored in their final preseason game against the local college team playing Cal Berkeley. Not the same as an actual regular season goal, but you'd think he'd have a celebration plan. Caught by surprise. And it looked like Adam Grinwis was caught by surprise as well. He was just watching that ball. Seemed like he could have come out to grab it. As Conway goes for a goal, stumble from Blanchett, hits the post, stays out, now off the crossbar, but the offside flag came up. What is going on in this game in the second half? It's a half chance for Conway here, it just takes a wicked deflection. But Paul Blanchett just awkwardly on that right knee. He's had some trouble with footing throughout the, this game. Hopefully he's okay as he's down once again. Just an awkward, unable to plant his right foot.
Look back at that goal again. I was just mentioning Grinwis. Watch him, watch him. He thinks nobody's there and then tries to spring into action. Just a miscommunication, it seemed like, on the back end from Charleston. Alex Eve, the beneficiary. That's the first shot on target of the match for Oakland. And you have to think that with the lack of game time from Grinwis in terms of his career, right? Because there's no teacher like the game. Not understanding the moment, not coming and commanding his six yard box. But give credit to the young man, the academy product. Advancing himself into that final third, he gets rewarded for it. And it's a terrific ball. Plus, Daniel just lost it into the back post, begging for someone to get on the end of it. He's still on an academy contract, by the way, Alex Eve. Edgar Cruz has signed his professional deal with the Roots, but Alex Eve and some of the others thrust into emergency action tonight are all still on academy contracts. That gives them the eligibility to still go on to college if they'd like. As we've seen so many players in USL over the last couple of years, academy deals, go to college, come back on a pro deal beyond that. Just gives them that option to still get this valuable playing time and score a goal. Remember, this was fully controlled by Charleston in the first half. That miscommunication that led to that goal there for Oakland, the only real chance they've sniffed in this one. Charleston, 11 shots, but only two on target. Haven't been efficient. That's something that Ken Pierman might want to see differently in the second half. For Smith. Flipped over the top toward Markanic. Foot race. Rasmussen lost the battle, it seemed like. And it is a goal kick. Really well timed challenge there from Rasmussen. We talked about the entry ball as well. Well, there was Gutierrez or Rodriguez just popping off that back line and just whips this ball in. It's a like-for-like -like foot race. Needs to get it right, does just that. This changes the directive from Oakland at all. That they got the goal and maybe content to get out of here with a point given the circumstances. And on the other side, again, turning the heat up on Charleston. Think of how it would feel for the battery fly cross country to have a lead against a depleted team and not leave with three points. Look out here, pressure from Cherie. Grinwis plays out of it. It'll be a long flight back for the battery. And one change you see from the Oakland Roots already, just how compact they are from back to front. A bit more opportunistic. One here by Rodriguez. Johnny Rodriguez, Jesse El Cedeno weaving through. Cedeno still looking for it, it's underneath him. Rodriguez still down behind the play. Rodriguez wanted the free kick. I don't think because he was down that he realized the advantage was there. But as a result of not pressing as high as you were in the first half, now you have more numbers around the ball and you can hunt in groups. And as you hunt in groups, it gives you more advantage in terms of forcing turnovers higher up the field. And that's something that we've seen from the Oakland Roots and the Charleston Battery haven't really had an answer to it. Try to overcomplicate things and try to take players on, taking too many touches on the ball. Something that made him so good in that first half was the ball's moving quick. Simple and efficient between lines. And it has not been the same story since coming out of the break. Back for Blanchett. 
Logue. The left footed center back did have it on his preferred side. Didn't do well with it. Rodriguez, delivery, and Chet receives. Wants to play quickly, low line drive that he didn't seem too happy with. It's been an awkward night for Blanchett. Moments like that in the distribution, the goal that he let in, the near goal that did take a slight deflection where he lost his footing. Two players getting ready to come on for Charleston. At the next stoppage, it's Cedeno pushing it forward into the path of Cherie. Nish Nader Cherie. Back to Cedeno, goes down far too easily. Applaud the effort, but that was, <laughs> that was never gonna be called. It's a sloppy touch from Cherie at the end. The striker, you want to be decisive in your movement, know exactly what you want to do, especially when you advance yourself into the 18-yard box. Just tries to overcomplicate things and talking about strikers, that will be the day for Conway. Didn't really make his impact felt, didn't really get the service that he would like. And the same goes for Gutierrez. Started out extremely bright, but kind of faded as his game progressed. Juan David Torres takes the spot of Gutierrez. MD Myers takes the spot of Jackson Conway. That is a name to maybe get acquainted with here in USL Championship. MD Myers, last year's Golden Boot winner and best 11 striker in MLS Next Pro in the NYCFC organization. It was a third round pick by the club in 2023. Might have started last week, but not for not being 100%. They wanted to wait a week. Get him some run tonight and evaluate his health going forward. But he had 19 goals in his 28 games last year in Next Pro. And he's a target man. And you just see the physical attributes that he possesses. Likes to play with his back to goal, but can also spin and stretch opposing back lines. Big opportunity for MD Myers just to make his impact felt. From Delran, New Jersey, went to Rutgers for his final collegiate season after three years at High Point. Myers in his one year in the Big Ten. His first team all Big Ten and North Region. Here at Rutgers had 13 goals and seven assists. Back for Grinwis who has to deal with the bounce while being pressured by Cherie. Funneled out for a throw. Awkward position there for the keeper. Goal can change everything, and all of a sudden it feels like Oakland have some life and a real path to three points in this game. You're looking for a great way to enjoy a night out with friends, family, or coworkers. Check out. The discounted group ticketing options for your next birthday or party. Tickets can be found at oaklandrootssd.com slash tickets or by calling 510-488-1144. Malloy, hour gone, half hour remains. Slotted centrally, but Hackshaw clears. Rodriguez goes for goal and gobbled up by Blanchett. Talked a lot about MD Myers coming on in that double switch for the Charleston Battery. Juan David Torres, an interesting story as well. We had asked 
Ben Pierman, what was your biggest surprise of the offseason if a player came back fitter or, or added some new skill, just overall improved? His surprise was a literal surprise. And Juan <laughs> David Torres showing up at the facility with his family who took him there, asked for a tryout. Charleston said, why not? Gave him a tryout, gave him a more formal tryout, made the team, and they're very excited about him. Comes from Colombia for the last couple of years with Mirarios. He's a crafty, clever player with a unique skill set. Didn't really ask questions how he ended up there or why. They just said thank you very much and signed him. Rodriguez. Arcanic with a goal already looking for another. And it's out for a goal kick. You've just seen from his movements, Torres, how comfortable on the ball he is and just looking to combine with the players around him. And that man, gonna have a lot of responsibility going forward in this season for the battery. He's very clever in the space that he picks up. You just see the quick trigger, the release from Nick Marcanic, just unable to get on target and ask questions to Paul Blanchett. just see the spacing a lot better for the Oakland Roots. Both players supporting in those gray areas and forcing the issue and making this battery side make decisions, whether it's a center midfielder dropping off or center back pressing higher. Arturo Rodriguez picked up that yellow card. Point exactly. So Daniel just off the shoulder between him, Torres, and Allen. You force the issue and you draw a yellow card for the opposing team. Or excuse me, it was Torres who picked up the yellow. Not Rodriguez. And they go again, Charleston. Rodriguez runs into Marcanic. Rodriguez, it took a deflection, it seemed. Lanchette realizes it and he'll track it down. Although it was curling away from the end line anyway, I don't think it was going out for a corner anymore. Johnny Rodriguez, the lone yellow remaining on the field for Oakland after Tamakas was subbed off. Juan Palma and Juan David Torres with yellows for Charleston. Good sign if you're an Oakland Roots fan. Two games into the season, and Noah Delgado so far, still time to go tonight, seems two for two in making halftime adjustments. Marcanic pivots away from Rasmussen. Fizzed in by Segbers. Always dicey when it comes off a center back in that way. How many of those do you see end up in the goal for an own goal? It'll be a corner this time. Really good ball from Mark Segbers, just testing this back line. And as a striker, you always want to slash across that near post because it does two things. It pulls out a center back with you, number one. But number two, if you get on the end of it, it's an easy tap in. The lack of run there from Myers. Yet again, very dangerous set piece for the visitors here. Malloy delivers. Arcanic was there. Comes out for a volley by Allen that's touched over the bar. What a stop by Blanchett. Another corner on the way. You deal extremely well with the first phase, but it's the second phase that can hurt you as well. But just watch the technique from Allen. The hips to get his leg horizontal to the ground. He hits it so pure. In the ensuing corner, Hackshaw heads it away. Uh-oh, right back out to Allen. He hits it well again, this time on the ground. And it's blocked on the way through. How good of a save was that from Paul Blanchett? The athleticism, the body control, just to punch it up and over the bar. Big time from Paul DeWall. And that is big time contact there from Sherry. who will pick up a yellow. 16 shots to four in Charleston's favor. Four on target to one. Quadruple the amount of shots, quadruple the amount of shots on target equal amount of goals.
Torres. Rodriguez. And Rasmussen guides it away. Malloy. Segbers. Good ball from Segbers. Malloy. Segbers. No trouble for Blanchett this time. Oakland Roots are back at home on March 30th at Cal State University East Bay against the Las Vegas Lights, who lost today 3-1 at home against FC Tulsa. Limited single-game tickets still available. Purchase yours before they sell out. Secure your tickets by visiting oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or by calling 510-488-1144. Little look, Vegas side might take some time still to mesh with all the new faces, but plenty of talent. Lost to Tulsa today, a good time to remind you. Still only week two of the season. Tulsa, Memphis, Western Conference this year. Had to migrate over after we said so long to San Diego and RGV. And we welcome back North Carolina after a couple of years in USL League One. And we welcome expansion side Rhode Island both to the Eastern Conference. So Tulsa and Memphis have to slide out west. Given away carelessly on the back end by Palma, played through from Cedeno with too much on it. Goal kick. Big opportunity missed here from Cedeno. You talked about it at halftime. You asked me, what can the Oakland Roots do better in the second half? You forced a turnover. Your first look needs to be forward. Example A, the real estate in beyond and in behind the high line of the Charleston battery. The ball needs to be pumped into the feet of Johnny Rodriguez. And it's a 1v1 with him and Grinwis. Josh Drack will be the next one into the battery. Emilio Icaza flanks him, so a double change again coming from Charleston. Their fourth and fifth subs of the night coming. Strike from distance here by Torres. 20 minutes to go. Ben Pierman exhausting his last two substitutions. That's aggressive. Leaving yourself vulnerable for 20 minutes of not having any insurance in case of any injury. Maybe just a case of sensing there are three points to be had here and wanting to wrestle complete control back. Chris Allen will come off and Aaron Malloy will come off. So two defensive midfielders for a wing back and a 10. Oh, excuse me, just handing off the captain's armband there to Ikaza. Malloy seemed curious. He took it off right away, was running to the sideline. Just a sign of respect of giving it to Ikaza. <laughs> I was about to question Ben Pierman for a second, <laughs> pulling off Malloy in this instance, but <laughs> Malloy remains. That's a glimpse of the respect they have for Ikaza, by the way. Aaron Malloy has earned that captain's armband and earned all the accolades that have come his way in USL Championship to remain on the field and still pass it off. That's that sign of respect for Ikaza. And he's gonna slot right next to Aaron Malloy with the likes of Rodriguez in front of them. Torres on his left-hand side, Markanik on the right-hand side, and Myers spearheading the attack. Drac will be like for like for Dos Santos. That sub makes a lot more sense than Malloy. <laughs> USL Championship is on CBS Sports and ESPN platforms all season long. Catch live matches, expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Golasso Network and ESPN Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete USL TV listings. Long throw from Hackshaw. 
Cedeno back for Hackshaw. Lamel Hackshaw to the back post. Grinwis punches away. Johnny Rodriguez was lurking. That's exactly what Grinwis should have done on the goal that they conceded, just commanding your six yard box as a goalkeeper. Your decision making is one of, if not the most important thing. You make a decision, you go with it. You make any sort of play under the ball. When you get caught in no man's land, you see what happens. Alexi sc scores the equalizer here for the Oaken Roots. Another throw in launched into orbit. Mikasa gets this one clear. Cedeno. Torres. Malloy. Track slotting it through, but split the difference between Markanic and Myers. A wise of Graham Smith to just let Grinwis come corral that after the header back from Malloy, who now has some space and can reignite the attack again for Charleston. Still 1 0 Monterey Bay over Phoenix in the other match. Rodriguez. Plays it through, here's Myers, comes up awkwardly on Blanchett again. It's weird moments tonight from Blanchett, uncharacteristic for the second team All-League keeper last year. Good entry ball from Rodriguez just to break the line into the path of Myers. It's a positive first touch from the big man. Just see how quickly he gets that shot off, but straight at Paul Blanchett. Like you said, Joe, just not secure, not, doesn't seem too confident at the moment, Paul Blanchett, and the saves that you expect him to make, there is a bit of spillage. Cedeno, Rodriguez, bounces through for Cherie. Awkward hop at the end, not much you could have done with it. Good highlight of pressure though from the roots. And not, that's not all waning in this game, sorry. And that's something that Noel Delgado mentioned to us on our phone call. Yes, John Rodriguez didn't get on the score sheet last time out, but he did a lot of off the ball, the dirty work that you asked from a number nine. It's to repress, it's a counter press, it's a closing down and making life extremely miserable for the opposing center backs. He's been extremely active on the defensive side of the ball, especially in the second half, John Rodriguez has. Malloy down needlessly by Cedeno. Rodriguez and the overlap from Drac. Played back through from Myers. Rodriguez. Aaron Malloy going for goal. Steve commits the foul. Long diagonal from Graham Smith. Knocked back into play by Markanic. Did well to even keep that ball alive, Markanic. And 
now commits the foul. He's going to get a yellow for kicking the ball away afterwards. The frustration from Mark Hannick. I always know there is going to be a lot of contact. It's a foul for sure. No card is where I have a question mark. Extremely soft. Well, probably for kicking the ball away afterward. There you go. That's why you got your referee license, Joe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got to renew that, by the way. I keep getting the email <laughs> alerts that it's expiring soon. You never know. You never know. Cherie! <laughs> Almost a moment to introduce himself to this Oakland crowd. Just moments like that from this Charleston back line in the second half where they haven't been secure in their clearances and have gifted Oakland opportunities like that. Arcanic. Rodriguez lets it go for Torres. Juan David Torres, not a bad ball to Myers. Blanchett just looks like he's having fun tonight. Like he's sliding <laughs> all over the place. It, it's an interesting adventure it's been tonight in goal for Blanchett. He missed the laning surface. That's what it is. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. I've never been a goalkeeper. I, what am I to say? But it just feels like there are moments where he's sliding around and just... <laughs> Having some fun, I guess, tonight. Glimpse there, more importantly, though, at what MD Myers can do in the air. You mentioned it as soon as he came on, that big frame of his, how dangerous he is in the air. Didn't seem like there was much there to still generate that kind of power. Put it wide, but still to even turn that into an opportunity. Flat-footed, he basically was. Trayvon Reed getting ready to come on for the Roots. So it'll be for Mishnaider Sheri. Slip through for Markanic. Took him a bit too wide. Segbers. And in the 80th minute now, still level at one. Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Joe Malfa. Happy to have had you with us this evening. 10 plus stoppage time remain in a 1 1 game. Markanic in the first half for Charleston. Alexeev in the second for Oakland. Hackshaw flicks this one away. Drac. Rodriguez. Arturo Rodriguez. And the assist on the goal. In the first half. Torres. Looking back post all the way through. A tantalizing ball. Really good ball from Torres. Just begging for someone to get on the end of it. Markanic makes that near post run. He pulls out a center back with him. So that's when you're asking Myers just to crash at that far post and get on the end of it. Also see Alex Sieve on his way out. Alex Sieve, a first team debut to remember for the Oakland Roots, the leveling goal. Tomas Kamir comes on for the Roots. Getting the fresh legs from Trayvon Reed now at the front line of the Oakland Roots. So look for him just to stretch the opposing back line and threaten in behind, try to stretch out and open up gaps for players like Johnny Rodriguez and Cedeno to operate underneath him. Come here for Alex Sieve is another academy contract player coming on for the Roots. Again, given the roster limitations tonight, with the illness that made its way through the team, a non-COVID flu, as described 
by the team. Rodriguez loaded over the top for Trayvon Reed. Coming across is Josh Drack. Rodriguez, Gomez. See what Trayvon Reed could do with his fresh legs. He's been very impressive. Made his Jamaican full national team debut on November 12th. Foul here at midfield. Palma was involved. It's already on a yellow. Doesn't look like he'll pick up a second one here, but whatever leash he had is gone. Rodriguez pleading that it should have been a second yellow right then and there. Three timeout brought to you by Anthem. Cedeno. Stern talking to here for Palma. It actually looked like the foul went against the roots, I believe, but Palma still for that contact at the end of it. Popped up on the referee's radar. Can't watch the match. Turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays at 7 Eastern, plus live matches from USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the Sirius XM app. Six and a half remain. That's whatever stoppage time has in store. Oakland being outshot 21 to four. Six on target to one. Still 1-1 one -one though. And a corner for the battery. Just saw Rodriguez and Graham Smith have a couple words on top of that 18 yard box to look for something to free up Graham Smith there. He was free and just sort of got out of the way because Ikaza was coming back at him. And now it'll go Oakland's way. A new era of USL kicks off in April. Join us on Saturday, April 6th on CBS as Louisville City FC takes on Indy 11 at 4 p.m. Eastern at Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville, kicking off the first ever national broadcast of the USL on CBS Networks. You did hear that right, it is CBS, not CBS Sports, not Golasso Network. You can catch games there throughout the year. This is CBS on April 6th for Lipa FC. Be nice to introduce the country to that rivalry that has been so great for so long in USL. A good way to introduce it to that audience to a drag on the turn. It's Myers for Ikaza. Segbers. All five subs that Charleston made. How many teams across USL Championship are they unquestioned starters on? It's an incredibly deep team in terms of the quality, not quantity, small roster intentionally so they can maneuver in the summer. The quality is superb. Ikaza. Would love to see their training sessions, oh. just how competitive they are. I think there's only a few players that have their name in pen in the starting 11 for Ben Pierman. Other than that. I mean, I would have told you a couple of the ones from last week that didn't start today had their name in pen and they didn't start this week.
to have those tools at the disposal of it. In the opinion of many, the best coach in USL Championship. At least one of the best perennial coach of the year candidate. There was always that belief about Ben Pierman. His time in Memphis. Rodriguez looks through. That'll stay in, actually. Drac couldn't get there. It'll be a throw for the roots. Rasmussen is pumped about it. But we always had that feeling about Pierman in Memphis, a team that didn't open the checkbook as much. And he still managed to take a roster that, on paper, is bottom third of the league to the top of the Eastern Conference. And before that, what he did with Detroit City FC before they made the jump to USL Championship, that got him the job in Memphis. Always did a lot with a little. Now doing a lot with a lot. No accident his first year that he made it to the USL final. It's one thing to have roster, but it's also one thing just to build a culture, right? Mm. To build the competitive spirit and players that want to play for you, that want to make it a destination, right? How many players you ask for on USL Championship, if you give them the opportunity to play at Charleston, they're going to take it with both hands and grab it. And I do think that's Ben Pierman, because everyone can coach players that know how to play, that understand that what winning is. But when you build a culture to fight, to have that kind of underdog mentality, and I do think that's something that the Battery have really implemented since he's taken over. Hackshaw. Reed won it cleanly. Cedeno. Reed. He gifted the free kick in the end. An opportunity on the set piece for the Roots with 90 seconds to go, plus stoppage time, which we're told will be four unofficially. Chance to go ahead. These are always tricky for a goalkeeper. If you're Grinwis here, here's to Daniel. You're aiming for that back post right on top of that six yard box with the oncoming traffic. If no one touches it, can squeak in. Diaz, an option with the right foot. Cedeno, an option with the left foot. Could he sneak this near post with a one man wall? Cedeno drives it to the back post. Hanging up forever, and Hackshaw comes through. He timed that perfectly, but he put it right at Grinwis. Bottom of your screen, you're going to see Hackshaw just come in. The power, no one challenges for it. If it was anywhere else on target, it's 2-1 for the Oakland Roots. if this adds any time to stoppage time now with Drac down. It was unofficially supposed to be four. We'll get the fourth official's confirmation in a moment. Remember, they're out of subs, Charleston, so he isn't able to continue. That's it, they're down to 10 men for the night. of stoppage time confirmed. Hackshaw is hanging up there. Grinwis has it tracked. Cedeno, Rodriguez watches it sail away. It might 
My apologies. I gotta learn how to count again. It's been four subs for Charleston, so track will come off here, and Robbie Crawford will take his place. Somewhere along the way, I scratched an extra one off there. Promise I can count. Our audio people know when we have to do the sound check before every game. <laughs> Gotta count Better to ten often enough. Better bring your calculator next time out. <laughs> be a good gift for you. Yeah. Birthday coming up? No, we got a long way to go. January 4th, baby. Oh. That's it. Long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Crawford for Rodriguez. Slipped through a flick on from Torres. On the same page, nobody was even making that run. Now four minutes were given, a minute and a half remain, but that stoppage with the injury to Drac, I imagine will go a minute or so past the four minutes that were given. Drac is still on the ground being looked at, by the way. Sometimes a draw feels like a win. Sometimes a draw feels like a loss. Sometimes a draw just feels like a draw. As Drenwis comes out to get this one. Knocked down by Rodriguez, who was on a yellow, by the way. He can't react here. We're going to blow past the four minutes of stoppage time. Neil Hackshaw trying to pull everybody away. Well, the main parties involved are Adam Grinwis and Johnny Rodriguez. Rodriguez for the initial foul. Grinwis for escalating it. Those two are arm in arm now. I think Grinwis, the 31-year-old tournament, knew what he was doing, trying to bait Rodriguez into his second yellow. And instead, it's Grinwis who picks up the yellow. I don't think there's any ill will here on Rodriguez's point of view. Eyes on the ball the whole time. You just see Grinwis does not like it whatsoever. Comes down extremely hard when he falls down. There's no need, just again, the face of Johnny Rodriguez, but give credit to Rodriguez. Like you said, Joe, he knows he's on a yellow card, does not react whatsoever. Just getting set to say, sometimes draws feel like wins, sometimes like losses, sometimes draws are draws. This feels like it would feel like a win for Oakland and a loss for Charleston, given the circumstances, given how this game has gone and how Charleston has dominated the chances and the opportunities and the ball in terms of possession. 21 shots to five, 67% possession to 33. And they may come away empty handed. Rodriguez going toward goal, taken down by Malloy. And he'll pick up a yellow. Sedano waving to the crowd to raise the decibel level. This might be the last kick of the ball here. But once again, it's the work rate from Johnny Rodriguez on the defensive side of the ball just to pick the pocket. I say this very often of Aaron Malloy. If there's any sort of contact, he goes down and wins a very dangerous set piece once again for the home side here. Diaz and Cedeno stand over it. It's way too far for a shot. You'd think, floated toward that back post, and that might do it. And that will be the last kick of the ball. Referee blows the whistle. A 1-1 draw tonight on a goal each for the Oakland Roots and the Charleston Battery. I think if you know Delgado, you'll take this 1-1 draw. You talk about depleted roster that you had due to illness, how susceptible you were in that first half, but everything that you changed in the second half defensively, spot on, making life extremely difficult for the Battery and for Ben Pierman. How do you get into that final third and be more clinical and making your possession count? That's going to be the next step for the reigning Eastern Conference champions. Tonight's final score brought to you by Anthem. Oakland 1, Charleston 1. We wrap it up in just a moment. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up 
still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. Their still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card. A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order? Then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with Ava Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about Ava's low rates for electricity. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail. Because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Medellin, the mark of a fighter. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. Their still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Once again, your final score brought to you by Anthem Oakland 1, Charleston 1. Take a look at tonight's full-time highlights. A second half that really sprang to life after a cagey first half. Most of the opportunities belong to Charleston, including the goal that was scored in the 36th minute. Just comes down to decision-making from Rodriguez. Watch his head full-time looking inside the box, and it all comes down to the movement from Marcanic. Yeah, he doesn't hit it a lot, doesn't hit it hard, but it's the whippage and the pace that Rodriguez hits this ball into the box with, and you see Paul Blanchett, the disbelief from the goalkeeper of the Oakland Roots straight at him. He should do better, and you expect him to do better, but what was gonna be the reaction from the Oakland Roots, especially coming out of halftime? Where you are gonna settle things down defensively? We're gonna go for this game, and I do think when you brought in the subs that came on the field, you locked things down. Hackshaw went to the back line, and you gave your special players advanced, giving them the opportunity to advance themselves into the back post. Great ball in from Memo Diaz. And it's the academy kid, Alexiev, just sneaking into that back post. And you see the little bit of confusion, lack of rotation, lack of communication between Dos Santos and Greenwich. And the academy off to the corner to celebrate. You saw Cherie really started that play with the run, dropped it with that little back heel. Sedano did the rest. So nice to see a newcomer for Oakland getting involved as well. If you did a blind resume of these stats, Charleston should have run one running away, but it finishes 1-1. They have a little bit of soul searching to do after this one, opening their season with back-to-back -back draws now. I do think it's the same message for Ben Pierman. We had a lot of the ball, but what do we do with the ball? What's the next step in terms of the progression? Yes, it's a young 2024 season, but you want to find the back of that. And like he said, pick up points when you're starting to figure yourself out and get in the rhythm. But for the other side, the Oakland, if we talked about the illness that hit Nel Delgado and that depleted roster, how are you able to galvanize your troops and come out together and salvage a point? or maybe even steal three, you'll take the point at home and we go again next weekend. Absolutely, and the Oakland Roots and Bart want to make sure you get home. Visit bart.gov slash planner to plan your trip now. Charleston will fly home with only one point when they felt they should have had three. Oakland may be happy with just the one given the circumstances. So for the crew that makes this possible and my broadcast partner, Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Joe Malfa saying so long for now. Oakland and Charleston take a point each on a goal each. Good night, everybody. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.